I want to say this. For us to worship in spirit and in truth, we must be aware of the sin that is within us. And there are many different areas of sin. And I'm touching on one today, and this is literally a little touch. I'm going to come back with a deeper teaching. Because there are strong men that affect our families, affect us in the workplace, and affect us in the church. And we need to be aware of it. And I would have spoken to you previously, many times before, of the Jezebel stronghold. And there are others. So we're going to be touching on various ones because our marriages are affected. Our families are affected. The church is affected. And we need to understand it's an, it's a, it's an entity that seeks to cause us to behave in a certain way where it becomes a habit. It becomes part of how we are. And demons are attracted because it's not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But what happens is it actually allows us to be used by Satan to destroy our families, destroy the church, and be one of those people in the workplace that puts the fear of God in people, but in a bad way. So we have to be aware of how this entity operates. I can't do justice to it right now, but I need to touch on it because I'm going to lead you through a prayer of repentance at the end before we close in worship. Why? Because you're going to take the little bit of information that you find out, okay? You might go and listen to some of the messages I've taught on it, but begin to apply it in your life immediately because it influences us. And in many cases, if you don't recognize, it could be in your bloodline and it's come down and it's to cause you to operate in the way the character traits of Jezebel operate. And it was so repulsive to the Lord because it's a type of um, entity that infiltrates where he's trying to establish his kingdom and in the family, marriages, the church. So we read in Revelation 2, 19 to 25. I know all the things you do. So we are on a fast. So can we receive this as a word from God? I know all the things you do because this is the word of God. Your love, your faith, your service, and your patient endurance. And I can see your constant improvement in all these things. This is a church was, that was improving in these areas. But I have this complaint against you. You're permitting that woman, that Jezebel who calls herself a prophet, to lead my servants astray. She is encouraging them to worship idols, eat food, worship to idol, offer to idols, and commit sexual sin. I gave her time to repent, but she would not turn away from her immorality. Therefore, I will throw her upon a sickbed, and she will suffer greatly with all who commit adultery with her. Unless they turn away from all their evil deeds, I will strike her children dead, and all the churches will know that I am the one who searches out the thoughts and intentions of every person. He searches out the hearts and the thoughts and intentions of every person. And I will give to each of you whatever you deserve. But I also have a message for the rest of you in Taratira who have not followed this false teaching as they call them, depths of Satan. I will ask nothing more of you except that you hold tightly to what you have until I come. Okay, very important here. I need us to understand that strong man that comes over families and churches seeks to cause families, churches, and they operate. It operates through persons or it may seek, let me backtrack a bit, where there are doors that have been opened for Jezebel. Okay, so in the past, it may be, remember I'm only touching on this, it may be in your generational line. And perhaps when I share with you some of, quickly, some of the characteristics of Jezebel, it could be your mother, your father, your grandmother, your grandfather exhibited these kinds of behaviors 
okay? And also to places that you've been and frequented perhaps before you were saved or maybe you're still frequenting, okay? Open doors, secular entertainment movies where there are things that are showed that are contrary to the word of God. Magazines, pornography, sexual perversion, homosexuality and lesbianism, promotion of feminism, where we have lost respect for the order of man being the head because we have difficulty and because maybe there are men who don't know how to lead we have rewritten the order and decided this is how it's going to be and what feminism says is we don't need men and in fact if we are doing something better than the man then go ahead and do it regardless if you're in a marriage that can create difficulties and sometimes we solve it by just the female being a man and the man being a female in terms of roles. So the female leads and the man follows. Because perhaps it hasn't been taught to the female or the male does not give us the right to settle for it. Does not give us the right to rewrite. There's nothing wrong if a female works and maybe a man works in a different way and they have different jobs. That's not what I'm talking about. There is an order in the home, an order in the family, where we are, I'm speaking to Christians here, where you can't be, the female is the one that decides when we pray, and it's like you have to pull the male along, or the male wants to establish a certain way, and there's no leeway given for him because perhaps he's not seen as spiritual. There's a lot of reasons I cannot go into right now, but I'm letting you know, feminism, we can find it everywhere. That's a whole topic by itself, okay? Harlotry and prostitution. The women's orders of Freemasonry, many of you are not familiar with. I am, and I will be taking some of you through the renouncing. I will teach more on it. But there are women's orders, not just Freemasonry, it's not just about a male order. The Jezebel entity has, is part of that. So if you were involved, Jezebel would have become part of your bloodline. Wherever there's been witchcraft, occultism that you've been exposed to, selfish ambition and pride. I want you to also know that, and I had said this before, many who are affected by this both entity and way of behaving, because I want us to understand, it's not just a case of cast it out. It's a case of you have to understand certain manifestations of the way you behave is a direct result of the influence of that spirit so you have now to be able to get help to behave a different way so it's not just casting out spirits it's also deep healing that must occur deep healing that must occur because what happens where someone is affected in their marriage or in their workplace or in in the church and they are operating with that way that spirit there's been deep rejection, there's been deep hurt, so you need healing in those areas. So it's not just spirit of Jezebel, go. It doesn't work that way. Okay? So if you have to repent of a Jezebel operating in you, you need help at many levels. Okay? I need us to know that this is important because of the way this entity has entered into marriages to mash them up and the church to destroy and in the end the, risk, the person as well because the host will certainly be destroyed if they don't get help so the trigger would be disagreement with leadership so it might be disagreement with leadership feeling like they've lost authority and control what does that mean so in the marriage so if we confuse, we don't know who the head is. 
So, wife always arguing with husband about what husband says. Do you understand? Mutual submission is not understood. There's arguing. So, you could even have a male and the female has no respect. We are not saying that maybe the male needs help. But because someone does something wrong, doesn't give you the right to also do something wrong. Are you understanding how this works? So disagreement, the trigger is disagreement with leadership. And then the ch if they've lost authority, lost control. So you could have a wife. If that wife not in control, that wife can function. I'm giving you a point blank example. I have to say wife because we're talking here. The leader is the husband. Then you have to get help as to how to operate in the right order. But you can't say that it's because it's so, then you are going to be so. Because you will just continue to operate with Jesse as part of your marriage, whether you think you're justified. It's the same in the church. Disagreement with leadership. You're gifted, you're in ministry, and the pastor is giving you a certain direction, and you feel you are losing control of the way you think God has called you. Do you understand how th th this operates? That's a trigger. Okay? They feel their call, anointing, destiny, assignment is being challenged. Okay? Take that in your marriage. Take that in the church. I can only use the two that are most familiar. It's a little bit more challenging in the workplace, but you can have a boss who thinks that they are being challenged with being the head and you can get that boss operating a certain way. But I'm bringing it home to where I think we can apply it a little, a little better. Um, you know, it could, be, it could be a wife that feels that the call on their life is literally being challenged by the pagan husband that knows nothing. And I'm trying to explain to you, I'm not saying it's okay for the husband to behave that way. I'm saying the solution is not to settle for. Um, well, I have a call on my life, and this is how we're doing things, and this is when I go into church, and it don't matter what you think. Or this is how we're doing things. They have no discussion in this. In the same way, in ministry in a church, we get caught up with our titles that we have created because if you're sitting under pastors like us, we have no, we have, we, if, if, you want, if you want to offend us, is to get attached to titles because we are not like that. But if you get attached and you feel your call is being challenged because maybe others are either being called in or being used more than you, it's a trigger. You see, you could have that character of Jezebel and also a spirit of Jezebel affecting you, but it may not show itself until certain triggers. Do you understand what I'm saying? You might be real nice before you get married, till you marry he. You was an independent female before with your own bank account. Longing for a man to marry, you get married. And then he tells you, honey, it's a joint. And we have to discuss before you spend what you earn. That's a trigger for one who has that it will rise up. You, you, you understand? It will, it will rise up. I'm trying to say, saints, I'm not creating a war before we leave Tarion. Eh? I want you to understand if we leave these things, all the other things that we have a problem with will be affected because if I get a chance to quickly tell you how it affects our marriages and the church, you will understand why Jesus did not want the tolerating of what he referred to as that woman, Jezebel. They feel that their call and their anointing is being challenged. They go in defense mode. I am gifted. God anointed me. Who are you to tell me? I hear from God. You all remember what they went and they told Moses, what Miriam and them told? Yeah? You think you are the only one hearing from God? 
forgetting God chose Moses. Could we understand? You may feel you know more than the pastors and hearing more from God. That's okay, you know, because there's a fivefold ministry. We are both to share what God is showing us. But at the end of the day, if God chose those pastors, God chose those pastors, God chose Moses, you married he, so we're assuming you sought God and God chose he. Do you understand? Come now, Olya. I know you might not have prayed as much before because you know more things now than before. But God says he will turn to good everything for those who love him and are called according to purpose. If you love God, he will turn around your marriage. Even to the one that you think you really didn't really pray for. But you're married. There's a covenant. Do you understand? So I want you to know that defense mode, gifting, you start to talk about your anointing. La, 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 le, le, le. I need to be right. So we deal in marriage, church. I need to be right. It's deceptive. Depending on who you're talking to, you, you talk one story. You tell a next one a next story. If you talk to three people, three people confuse as to who you really are. You go and you tell this one, this child needs help. That one will say no. Everything okay with that one? Until you encounter a person who has discernment. That Jezebel entity hides and fools people and that's why it's easy to tolerate because some people are like, nah, can't be so. It operates like a chameleon. Manipulates people and conversations to go their way. So if in a marriage, every time they have an argument, it turn around, so you don't understand what you was doing to me. Listen, I don't know anything about what all you argue about. I just want you to know. It's called manipulation, okay? You were talking about A, it end up about how it's so hard for you and everybody against you and, and, and all it has do, all it has do for my family. Because a lot of times, the faults we find with our spouse is based on how much we do for them. Deal with the fault, but do not argue based on how much you do. Oh, are you understanding? That's a Jesse kind of approach. Don't go home and call nobody a Jezebel. Do you understand? This is an entity that is wrecking marriages and seeking to wreck some churches. The same way you have to be strong in your marriage, your pastors have to be strong to stand up against when that type of behavior starts up in the church. We're very strong, by the way. Any church based on holiness and repentance, always, constantly, on a yearly basis, that behavior surfaces. Just as in your marriage, you could get help in your marriage, could survive. You could get help in the church. Just as you do after a run and leave your, your hobby and, and your wifey, you do bong to divorce, you do have to run from the church. Stand up and get help. Constant state of confusion and doubt. No peace, always some drama. Counterfeits the prophetic and many get fooled because our discernment is not sharp. What we are calling prophetic is not prophetic. It's a demonic anointing with words that sound good. It could be supernatural manifestations, but it does not mean it is of God. Cannot properly discern the Holy Spirit else they would not be in that condition. Has problems with sexual sex temptations and sins. If in your marriage your eye cokey every time you're passing in the road, you understand? Or you're flirty flirty, right? Female and male, same thing in the church. You say you have boundaries, but you are the one that somehow the females or the males always seem to have some kind of contact with you. 
you have a problem with sexual temptations and sins and you're not confessing it to those that God has put in your life. Remember we spoke, go and get the tape, y'all, because two parts to this story in today on what repentance really is. And some of us are hiding the sexual temptation. We are not saying you have to confess to the church, but he would just say confess your sins one to another, pray for one another that you will be healed. There will be people God will put in your life you can trust and you need to say I am literally getting tempted every time I pass a mail or whatever and whatever. But you know what we like to do? We like to be so sanctified. We just protect, we, we pretend behind the cloak of, of spirituality that we don't be feeling those things. If every time you pass a nice looking mail, you find yourself having to real pull back, you have a problem. Nothing is wrong with a nice looking mail. But if you find yourself, your eyes have to roam. Same for the male and the female. You need some help. Because you cannot tell me that everywhere you go, God has to be pulling your long eye back. It can't be so. You carry a spirit of defilement or an unclean spirit. I won't go into what all of that is. I can't say all of it today. But you always want to teach and instruct others. Because you always figure you know so much. And maybe you know, but guess what? If you don't get help for what I'm touching on, and there's a whole lot more, that's how Jezebel reproduces. You know what I mean by reproduce? Prayer entwined. That spirit spreads. That way of how that person is, how that entity operates, looks for a way to plant itself in another person. Give them to rule over a workplace, you can have havoc if a Jezebel, a person with a Jezebel entity, runs an, a, a department. You can also have havoc in a church. You have little Jezzies being birthed, seeds planted in all kinds of different ways. I'll elaborate on this in an, another time, but I want you to understand. Very ambitious, self-promoting. And I want you to also know, as I finish this part, just say to you, perversion is reproduced in the children. And the other characteristics of Jezebel is reproduced in the children of parents who have that same spirit and or character behavior. So if you have soul ties, remember I tell you all you can have godly and ungodly soul ties. Remember the word of God says, the word says sons will turn against daughters, fathers against mothers. When you are a Christian, you can't mix your life, not even with the life of your father, mother, cousin, brother, who is operating in a pagan way. You can see them. But the same way, listen carefully to me before you misquote me, but I can't because this is being taped. The same way you are called to be set apart. Of course you love your family. I had to sever ties in a loving way with my parents because I did not want what was in their life to affect me. Do you understand me? I didn't become their enemy. Of course I was a Christian and I was the one that led them to the Lord in the end. But there was no hanging out all the time. What is the difference between that and an unsafe person being around you all the time? Tell me what's the difference. I'm not here to tell you be enemies with your family. But I'm here to tell you that you should be making a difference, not they making a difference. If year after year they're still unsafe, okay, they're still carrying on, then something is wrong with what is in you because it's not affecting them. Check yourself. Have you gone backwards or forwards? Be careful that the defilement is not coming from within your own family. You have some hard decisions to make this year. Because if that entity is in your bloodline, it reinforcing in you while you're having a good time being the best family member to be around everybody all the time because if you're not around them, they wouldn't get saved. Truth is, they are getting better. 
They are coming to church more. They are asking about Jesus more. But you catch in. It's called ungodly soul ties. You can have ties with your family, but the ungodly ties have to cut. And that's why Jesus says his word will cause father and mothers to turn against each other and husbands and wives. That's what it means. It don't mean just because you get saved, you're arguing about the gospel. It means there's a separation that has to come. And that's a whole other topic. So I want to say as I, as I, I, I want, I want to, to, to close, I have a lot more I could say, right? I want, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. There's a whole lot more. But I'm touching on these are things that affect your marriage. These are things that affect the church. They affect the church. What if someone came in here and they have not gotten deliverance from blessed divination they were exposed to and you put them in the intercessory group? Do you understand what I'm saying? But is your aunt, so you ought to put them. Is your aunt who now come to the church and you don't want to offend them, they ask to pray for people and you put them. They can defile what's in them. It's, it's, it's prayers intimate. So what is the difference between that and your family? Tell me, isn't this your family? Didn't Jesus say, those who do the will of my father is my father. So what's the difference, y'all? A lot of what we are struggling with is things that have affected us because we let our God, we let our God down when we are outside of this environment. And we justify it because that is where we come out from. Truth is, it's a smart way to turn back to the vomit. Smart way. Because we do everything with them. But the truth is, you can, you are in this world, but not of this world. So for me, I, was, I, was a, I really was a good daughter, y'all. But a lot of what I had grown up with, the Sunday lunches and those things that were wonderful, but I had back an all family. I didn't want for my own family. So we had to do things different. So I couldn't hang out the way families, no matter what. No, I chose Jesus and I chose the narrow way. They could come along, but if they didn't, you'll see me, but you ain't seen me so often. Of course you'll grieve, but I love Jesus more. I love Jesus more than my own family. I love Jesus more than my own family. I'm saying this not for you to feel down, but for you to understand we don't become a certain way just like that. It's not because God will love you. It is coming from somewhere. The sin that God is calling us for him to search our heart while we fast. That sin, where has it come from? Where has these patterns of behavior come from? Where has things from the past that we thought went showing itself now? Where? How? Reinforcement has been occurring in very subtle ways. And may I say, to whom much is given, much is required. Starting with leaders, your targets. And the enemy will find a way to take you down because he does not want to have leaders in the church that walk circumspect. And then there are those who may not be leaders, but they are in the church. And you are supposed to be influencing your families. And you're finding yourself going around in a circle. The Jezebel entity seeks to destroy. And there's pride and rebellion and abuse and neglect. And there's all kinds of power and control and domination and intimidation and manipulation and gossip and deception and bewitchment and all these things that happen as a result. And so, without going on further, I will say to you that the spirit of bewitchment that comes from Jezebel, it will blind discernment. And that's why in the churches, some of us have no discernment. We never could see what's going on under our eyes. It's called the spirit of bewitchment. People will blindly follow a person with that spirit. And they come under that spell. And that person is right in either their home 
or like for example, being married to someone and they're living a double life. And you can't see it at all. I've known of Christian women who never knew the husband was living a double life. How? Where's the discernment? There's a spirit of bewitchment that can seduce you, same as in the church. Same as in the church. That's why cliques are not good. Because cliques cause you to let your guard down. I is part of this clique. So everybody in the clique, okay. Till their life slides and gets into a mess and you still balling, I okay, you okay. I'm, I'm supporting what I'm saying by Galatians 3.1. Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? They were bewitched. And they started adapting to things that they were not supposed to. That's called bewitchment. The TV show Bewitched, released in 1964. You all remember with the, with the witch Samantha? Some of you wasn't born yet, but anyhow. It ran for eight seasons until 1972. Do you know that witches celebrated this show annually? It was used for satanic ritual abuse and mind control programming and culturally desensitized the population to witchcraft. Bewitchment, y'all. You wouldn't know how it was used. Maybe another time I explain to you directly how they used it. How could that happen? It could happen in churches too. If your discernment is not sharp, there's a bewitchment going on because discernment is something that God gives us. The fast, we need to mash up those strongholds. You hear what I'm saying? In Jesus' mighty name. And so, I want to say to all of you, I have to pause here. And I want you to know why it is we have to target these. So no one person feel or two people feel is about them. Jezebel is one of those things that comes into marriages, families, and churches. And that it comes with divination, is mashing up families today and mashing up churches today or making the churches so weak they are ineffective. Father, right now, I pray for all who are on Zoom and Father, all who are here in the sanctuary. And Lord, we have come. And today, Father, we can't we can't repent as we would like, but we are understanding repentance. So when we learn of these things, we now are seeking to get help so that we will stop. Father, I stand in the gap for the church right now. All who are present. And I come on their behalf. I'm in agreement with them. That they will turn away and they will repent and renounce the ways in which they have walked in agreement with the spirit of Jezebel. Forgive their sin, forgive our sin, cleanse our hearts and minds and fill us with the Holy Spirit. Father, forgive us for any deception that we've walked in. We confess any words or actions done on our part that, that, that have been deceptive or only half truths. We renounce the spirit of deception. Father, renounce it on their behalf. I ask you to cleanse their mind that they will walk in your truth. God, I renounce the spirit of manipulation in this church and in families. And Father, any words and actions done on their part, oh God, that with ulterior motives for personal gain, God, I confess those sins, oh God, before you, I renounce the lie. Father, that sometimes it may come to our mind that we can't trust Jesus to reveal the truth about people or situations. That we must go and do our own investigating, oh God. We can't wait on you, oh God. We end up gossiping. Father, forgive us for any ways in which we have manipulated people or circumstances to suit ourselves. Cleanse our thoughts and habits to walk in absolute surrender to your will and your ways. God. 
God, we repent of selfish ambition and the need to be seen. Father, we choose to humble ourselves before you and rejoice in the success of others. Father, forgive us for any unclean thoughts, word, or actions that mock or degrade your holiness. We renounce and reject any unclean spirit or sexual perversion in our lives. God, we give you permission cleanse our spirit, our soul, our mind, our body to be holy and acceptable to you. Father, create in us a pure heart, O oh God. Renew a steadfast spirit within us, O oh God. May our mouth be a sanctified instrument of honor to declare your praise and your goodness, O oh God. Father, forgive us for any judgments that we have placed on others in our homes, O oh God, in the workplace, in this sanctuary, in the church. God, you are the only judge. And when we disagree with someone that we will choose to pray for them and bless them and not curse them father forgive us for following our feelings and not the true word of God and, and, and the heart of God forgive us for following our feelings Lord and gossiping and breaking confidentiality father forgive us oh God sanctify our emotions and affections that we may please you and line up with your word father forgive us for any ways that we have sought to control and exert influence over others to get our way. I command those spirits begin to leave right now and go to the dry places. Father, we choose to submit to your lordship and your dealings with us. God, we submit. Even when, Father, oh God, it means that others will disagree with us and correct us, God, we will accept and we will receive that correction, oh God. Thank you for using others to help us to grow in you. Father, oh God, on behalf of the saints, Father, I renounce the spirit of fear and the fear of rejection from our thoughts and emotions that we will not fear man or man's ways. But you, we, you, Father, we know you will always love us and accept us and will never forsake us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we renounce panic attacks and anxiety disorders that stem from the Jezebel spirit. Father, we are covered by the shadow of the Almighty. We are safe under the shelter of your wings and we declare the peace of God. I declare the peace of God over your lives right now, your body, your life, your mind, your emotions. I declare that you are in the shelter of his wings. I declare the peace of God over your life right now. Jesus is your Prince of Peace and the Lord of your thoughts and emotions. And Father, I pray that you would come and remove the effects of this fear and remind your people of your goodness and love. Father, thank you for quieting their soul. God, on their behalf, I renounce the accuser of the brethren who has placed all accusations set against them, O oh God. All lies of the enemy that seek to destroy their trust and faith in God, O oh God. Father, right now, I renounce on their behalf all those demonic dreams and demonic influences through night visions. Father, all spirits of infirmity, I renounce in the mighty name of Jesus. I renounce all sickness in your life right now that has originated in your family but has come from the Jezebel spirit. Father, we know there are different roots, but if there be any sickness, because the Jezebel entity brings sickness, Father, we command that sickness to leave. And Father, we ask you for healing. Healing is the children's bed. Thank you, Lord, for being the healer, the healer in the house, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, I cancel the spirit of depression and heaviness over your people that would seek to pull them down and shut them up. They will not be yoked a spirit of heaviness. In the mighty name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of control and all the thoughts and lies that have sought to hold them down right now. In Jesus' mighty name, God, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Father, forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. Father, the joy of the Lord is our strength as we place our trust in you oh god we receive all your goodness and grace upon our lives set us free father as we go on this journey during this fast and as we understand oh god how the enemy targets us set us free from the influence and control of jezebel in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and amen amen saints God has only just begun. There are 
areas in our life that he is going to continue to set us free from. He is going to root out, do not give up. Remember what we said, his promises, his promises are not just promises. His promises are true. And we must continue to stand on what God has said he will do. We must continue to stand on that. And I just beg of you, please, don't, don't allow the enemy to convince you that this is all there is in life and that you are stuck and that you can't walk in power and authority. Your marriages can be restored. The church can walk in victory. Your families will and your household will serve the Lord. Hallelujah.